Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my good people out there. Welcome to another episode of the Sit Down with me, Daddy Say. Today I'm honored to talk to Eileen. She is an author, but I'll let her speak more about herself. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you today? Oh, I'm very fine. Okay. Uh, ready to have a chat with you. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, I really appreciate that you are able to come and have a conversation with me. Mm-hmm. Kindly uh, begin us with the books because that's where your focus is, mostly um, in the book world. But I know you said you are also a social worker, right? A sociologist. A sociologist, okay. Yes, yeah. Research. Okay. Yeah, as Daddy has said, my name um Eileen Omosa, and um, nowadays I introduce myself as a creative writer. But then before I became that, I'm um, a sociologist, mostly a qualitative researcher. So I like working with people and working within um, communities just to try and understand social issues facing people and how people are reacting to that. Yes. And um, that's what you'll see in most of my books. Okay. Because I write books where I borrow a lot of issues from what's going on within society, especially okay. relating to the African girl, the African woman who okay. has gone to school. Yes. So in the novels, I look at their journey of becoming career women, especially okay. how do they balance a career and yes. cultural expectations of them. Okay. Uh, yeah. How many books have you written so far? Mm, I think I have a total of 14. 14, okay. Uh, that, that's quite a number. I, I think mine is nowhere close to that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. You'll okay. get there. Okay. Yeah, because normally the good thing with books is that um, once an idea strikes yes. for me, yes. you write it down. So that's how you get to the number. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about your background. Where were you born and where did you grow up? Oh, it's been a long story <laughs> and a long journey okay. of, you know, being like here 14,000 kilometers away from yes. the place yeah, where I was born. I was born in rural Kenya. Yes. Uh, and that's where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Grew up in terms of education, primary and secondary education. But yeah. when I grew up in the 80s, it's like um, secondary education takes you a little bit out of your home area. Okay. So I, that's when my journey of moving out of home started. So for secondary school, I moved a few kilometers from home. Okay. And then university late 80s university you had to travel to the main city which was Nairobi okay so it took me out of home and that was like the beginning of my journey traveling the world because okay. um, after university education yes. i started working in the nonprofit sector okay and started traveling the world i mostly worked in the natural resource management sector yes Training people on gender issues when yes. it comes to managing resources, issues yep. of uh, benefit sharing, okay. issues of conflict management yes. when relating to natural resources. Okay. So from there, it's like I kept on learning more about issues of gender. Yes. The girl child going to school and then how I saw myself and the women I met with, yes, like how did they relate, especially with the men? Okay. So around issues of decision making, mm-hmm. gender, and over time I kept on reflecting on these issues. Yes. And um, I think that's part of, um, even though I've always liked reading and writing, yes, but the focus on. Um, the African girl, the African woman. Yes. I think it's part of the questions that um, kept on coming to mind. You know, like um, growing up, we used to be told if you, if you go to school, mm-hmm. you work hard, then it's like everything is going to be okay. Okay. It, uh, maybe I'll pick up from the school. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you mentioned you went to school outside your home area, right? Mm-hmm. What was the experience like, especially the high school? Uh, mm-hmm. Take us back to those days. Like, what was your first experience like going to high school? 
Um, it wasn't. Um, it was, of course, a joy. Yes. And um, it's something I'd been working towards, okay. working quite hard. Yes. And um, when I grew up, we went to all level. Okay. Before we went for our A levels, which was like high school. Okay. Uh, so for my O levels, I went to a school which was not very far from home. Okay. Um, and um, I can say it wasn't so bad because I'd had two of my older sisters in the same school go through that school. Okay. But when I joined, they had left. Okay. And they had. Um, gone to what at that time were very good um, A-level schools because they performed well. Okay. And during those days, surprise, surprise, it's like it gave you some sort of protection. Okay. Because, uh, of course, from once, the, um, the others liked enjoying them. Yes. But when they could hear my name, they yeah. are like, oh, this is the sister of so and so. And of course, they're oh, okay. from threes and fours. Yeah, so you already had the rapport set up before. They, you. they knew, you know, my sisters. Yeah. And my sisters had gone to Ngandu, both okay. of them. Okay. So qualified very well. So yes. that gave me some sort of protection. Like, this is the sister of... Yeah. So and so and so and so. Yeah, and and for particularly the protection we are talking about mm. bullying, for example, because it was a big problem back in the day in Kenyan schools. Okay, yeah, I think I escaped to that, okay. and um, I'd gone to a boarding school next to the main secondary school where okay. I went for my O level, so yes. I wasn't very new to the to the school. Yeah. And I can say I had the protection of um maybe from threes and from fours yes. who had been who are younger than my sisters. Okay. So I think that helped a bit yeah. and I wasn't too far from home. Okay. Uh, when I went for my a levels, which was a little bit away from home. Yes. The way it used to be was like, um, you know, when you've gone for your high school, yeah. you are already like somebody else. Yes. So you are respected by those who are doing their O levels. Okay. And for those who are doing their A levels, even if I was in form five. Yes. Um, I think for the form six girls, they were not so bothered about um, welcoming you in a different way. Yeah, and, and you are much older, right? The bullying was mostly like um, for form the form one. ones. They would call you mono, they would call you rubble, and make you fish even in invisible rivers. Of, right? of course, I was called that. It's not that, oh, you, I, okay. it's not that I wasn't called. Okay. I was called that, but they could not go too far because... Yeah. Um, they, I knew from threes and from fours, okay. or even from okay. two. So okay. it wasn't so bad, but of course, oh, okay. we were called that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so then your story changes from Africa to Canada. Maybe take us uh, through that journey. How was it? How did you end up in Canada then? Mm. As I mentioned, I worked in the natural resource management sector. Yes. And. Um, I got to travel like to different parts of the world. Yes. Um because uh, uh, when I was working in Kenya, I I traveled quite a lot to Europe. I okay. traveled to the US. Yes. I traveled to Asia and to so many countries within Africa. Okay. And then you know, it used to be like um, at some point you want to move to the USA. Yes. I have family there. I went there. I looked around how people were leading their their life. And yes. I was like, ah, it's too hurried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <'Cause that laughs> too time, fast for you. Too fast. Because okay. that time I'd started working in Kenya and yes. I was enjoying my job. Yes. Ah, uh, so I said no. What, were you working in Nairobi? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was, okay. At that time, I was working in Nairobi, but later on, I worked in Eldoret because I was working okay. in the North Rift. Okay. Uh, yeah, so until I traveled to Canada in Nova Scotia, yes. the, the east, 
for a meeting and I looked around and I was like, this looks like a good place <laughs> Okay. Uh, compared to <laughs> the Despite US. Despite the cold, it didn't scare you away? I think it was in, was it in April oh, or Oh, you May? came in the summer almost. But I traveled to the US in the winter. Okay, I okay. traveled to, to Europe. Yes. So I had an idea about the winter. Okay. But I'd been like, oh, it's time. Because initially uh, I was like, oh, I would like to work with the UN. Yes. So I was working towards that. Actually, okay. when I moved to Eldoret. Yes. Um, I was like, let me go and work in the field. Yes. And then after that, I would like to work with the with the UN because yeah. I went and worked with um, an international development organization. Okay. So I was their advisor for conflict management. Okay. Um, so I had that uh, dream, but then I was like, UN, I don't want to get to stay in New York or okay. something like that. So okay. when I went to the East, I was like, I think Canada looks like a good place. Yeah. Yeah. So we applied um, to get a PR and um, that's how we moved to Canada. Okay. So I call it an adventure. Okay. Nice. Nice. So you, you ended up coming with your family? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My Maybe tell us a little bit about your family. How, uh, how many when children? we moved, my children were below 10. Yeah. How many children do you have? Very many in oh, Africa. Okay. We, we don't count. <laughs> we don't count. Okay, okay, okay. We don't count our children. We don't count our lives. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you see, that's something to learn. African culture is very unique like that. <laughs> it's like in the North, it's like somebody asking you how much money do you have. Yes. Uh, but nowadays I can say... We we can say the number, but mm -hmm. during my mother's time, it was like taboo. You you first you don't ask that question, mm -hmm. and second you don't say it. Yeah. But as a researcher, yeah. I know how to get that information. As I chat with somebody, and then they will end up mentioning, or they keep on mentioning this yeah. child who lives here yeah. or this child who does this. Okay. For example, as we were talking, I mentioned two of my sisters who had been to the school before yes, me. Yes, yes. So somewhere you would... Yeah, I've already picked you uh, up too, yeah. And then you would <laughs> wait and hear me talk about the one I follow. Yes. And then maybe I would have said uh, my younger sister in the U.S. when yeah. I was talking about the U.S. So yeah. that's how we count people's okay. children. <laughs> okay. I guess maybe my generation moves on the first lane. Uh, because so much of African culture is also changing. Do, do you notice that? Oh, yeah, a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm saying a lot because um, last year mm. I, I went to Kenya like for one year. Yes. From 2002. I just came back in October. Okay. And, you know, I've always thought that I know the village where I was brought up. Yes. I've been traveling home quite often. Yes. Until I went and stayed there. And that's when I was like, I'm a stranger. <laughs> 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 that's when I realized that I've actually changed because my mom would be shocked. I, I went to stay with her a bit because she's unwell. Oh, sorry. But I could see she would get shocked by the things that I do or okay. I say. Yes. That's when I was like, oh, you mean I have changed? Yeah. Because I've always thought... um yeah, you, you probably think you never change, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I always blame it on the McDonald's around here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so things keep on changing. But back to my coming to Canada, yeah, so that's how I found myself here. Yeah. We first went to um, Toronto, yes. where I think everybody lands. Almost lands, yeah. Stayed there a little bit, and I was like, this city is too big. Okay. I partly because I'd left Nairobi and gone to Eldoret. Yes. If you know Eldoret in the late 90s, yes. it wasn't a big town. Yeah. So I was used to that life and I used to work in the North Rift. So yes. Eldoret was just my station. Yes. So when we came and went to Toronto and I'm like, oh, I don't want another New York. <laughs> so... And then, of course, looking for jobs, yeah. we had to move to the 
to the west. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, again, I'd moved from Kenya with my family. Yes. Again, we moved here together. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And at, at the time, was um, the, the economy in Alberta already picking up when you decided to move to the west? Uh, that was, we moved the uh, end of 2005. Okay. We just stay, stayed in Toronto for a few months. Okay. It was, uh, I don't know for how long you've been here, but at that time, um, Alberta gave people, was attracting workers to come from other sides of, um, of Canada. Of Canada yeah. So we were even being told, like, oh, during their tax returns this year, the government gave everybody, you know, money back. Yes. So it's like the economy is that good. Oh, okay. And I was like, hey, we okay. traveled <laughs> all the way from Kenya. Let's yeah. go. Okay. So Let's so you go. came in 2005 and to five. Canada. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just came a year before me. I came in 2006. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, how we moved here and... Um, Stayed by the time, because I think we are used to moving, by the time I was like, ah, we are bored of this place. The children were like getting to junior high, then to high school. You cannot move them at that time. Yes. So I found myself stuck here. (laughs) It's become my second home. Oh, okay. Yeah, but a wonderful place to live, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, There are many things we can appreciate about this part of the world, right? Yeah. 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 Um, then how did you end up, because you, you are a researcher, how did you switch then more into the books? When did that journey start? Or did it start a long time when you're still in school? I can say it's always been with me. Okay. Uh, yeah, from the time when I was young, I loved books. I loved to read. Yes. And then when I went to, for my all levels, I did literature. Okay. So I did the English and Kiswahili, Fasiya Kiswahili, which yes. was also Kiswahili literature. Yes. So I've always loved like stories. Okay. And after my undergraduate, I went back to the School of Journalism. Okay. So I wanted to continue writing stories. Okay. Tried working at the newspapers during my school holidays. And I was <laughs> like, eh, I don't think this is my type of life. <laughs> Uh, so I went into the natural resource management sector, but still working in the information department. Okay. So doing their newsletter. Okay. And such things. So I've always loved um, writing, reading, hearing stories, telling stories. Yes, yes. So when we came to Canada, of course, in between, I decided to go back to school. Yes. And then I had to work because we were still raising children. Yeah. But then after that, in 2015, I was like, um, the children are in high school, yeah. in university. Yes. I think now, of course, I love the uh, reading and writing. I was yeah. like, what if? And I try, um, I try to get a job, you know, the level that I would have liked. Yes. In between, I'd been getting jobs mostly at the university, but they were on contract. Okay. And when I finished my studies, it's like I did not have much access to those uh, jobs. Okay. So that's when I told myself, like, hey, what if I get back to my writing? Yeah. Yeah, so I started writing 2014, 2015. Okay. I think it spoiled me because after each story, I was like, okay, I'll stop here. And then another Another idea comes comes. and I continue writing. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I became a writer. So which was the first book that you published? It's um, Ignited by Education. Okay. Yeah. That's the book that took me longest, I can say, to write, like more than a year. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I wrote this book, Ignited by Education, yes. mostly focusing on the issue which I mentioned about um, African girls who have gone to school. Yes. So I was trying to bring the ideas, the issues into one book. Okay. Even though it's um, I use fictional characters, yes. the issues, you can find them within society. Yes. You know, 
you can find them in me yes in the african girls or ladies you see at yes. your place of work yes along the streets anywhere because it's that question of when we were being brought up we were told you go to school mm -hmm. education will solve will open so many doors for yeah. you education actually yeah. i remember my mom used to take us to the farm mm -hmm. even though dad was always against that because we had people to work on the farm but mom was like if they don't work hard at school mm -hmm. the alternative is for them to do farming so mm -hmm. it's good they go to the farm and have an idea mm -hmm. so i detested that it's yeah. i think it made us work even harder okay. because when you go to the farm and you are like oh no <laughs> 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 yes but then later on in life i look at the girls the women who have gone to school yes and sometimes i'm like did the education really give us the type of freedom that we were promised yes. because still up to now when i go back to my house mm -hmm. you know i'm like the one who sees things are in the wrong place yeah when i go back home in the evening i'm the one who will think about what are people going to eat yes so it's like did the education really help us get the freedom that we were told yes and then you can ask that question but then again i ask another question what's freedom to you mm -hmm. you know is it really was education to make you to stop being a girl or a woman or yes. an african woman yes. so that you stop doing these things yes. or are these chores uh, to be done by the female members of society yes. and the males have their their roles within society mm -hmm. so those are some of the questions that um, i try to look at in the books okay. like can you really even if you've gone to school yes. you have a good job yes can you remove yourself from what society expects of, of you, you. yeah Uh, yeah, so those are the issues I look at when I finished writing this book and it was out there. Yes. People started asking me more questions, okay. you know, especially being in Canada, yeah. questions about the African girl, the African woman. Yeah. That's when I was like, ah, I don't think the story ends here okay. with with this ignited by the question because yeah. this book starts the main character is called Sophia it okay. starts when she's completed university yes getting to employment okay and then i was like aha uh -huh, maybe it's time i look at what happens After. if if sophia gets married yes and uh, the story here it's um you know as a woman as an african woman yes. can you really stay at home yes. because we were brought up as the ones to to take care of take the care family, of family yes. uh, to bring forth children and take care of them mm -hmm. so the question that i ask in slowed by a baby mm -hmm. is um if you get married to somebody who is able to to provide yes. a millionaire maybe yeah. a son of a billionaire mm -hmm. and he can afford to provide but you've gone to school you are professional can you really stay at home and just become a homekeeper okay. or does education give us something that um, you know we need to do to feel fulfilled okay even if you have the money you are mm -hmm. provided for yes do we still need to go to become professionals to go out there and do something mm -hmm. or can we accept that and stay at home because we are getting everything that we need okay so when people read slowed by a baby that's what i would like them to continue okay. discussing okay and then as the discussion continued yeah. i wrote book three yes. that's trapped inside the family box okay uh i was looking at the bigger question of um you know as human beings yes. especially as uh, african girls and women yes 
and having lived in the north where people almost tend to talk of um you know the nuclear family you yes. can do your own things yes but in this book i'm trying to show that um we are more than uh, individuals yes we belong to a community yeah so i'm looking sophia's story what's her journey of um integrating into her bigger family okay. now that she's married yes she has her family where she came from yes and then now she has her husband's family mm-hmm. and she's a professional which we looked at here okay so it's that bigger picture of um what does it take to become maybe a fulfilled human being okay so all through um i'm looking at a number of themes the theme of uh, education okay looking at issues of is it supposed to be equality or equity okay. when it comes to gender issues okay the the three books the first one and the two mm-hmm. are a trilogy right yeah, yeah and they focus on the same character character sophia okay. from when okay. she completes university until now yeah integrating into the larger community i, I think personally for me my favorite <laughs> is becoming a woman in the village <laughs> right because i love short stories Uh-huh. I love short stories and I my first book was actually short stories mm-hmm. and poetry. Mm-hmm. So um I, I'll, I'll I'll let you talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Um but let's go to the first book. You you have an excerpt for us from the first book, right? You're going to read us mm-hmm. so that we get a little taste of the of what you're know, you missing. Of, yeah, what we're missing <laughs> and so that you can also grab your own copies out there, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think I'll read um a few pages from towards the end of the the book. Okay. And as I said the main character is Sophia. Yes. Her mother is called Stella, the father is called Mariko, and she has a sister called Joy. I'm just giving you those names because where I'm going to read from you're going to hear of the four of them. Okay. And um in this book Sophia has completed university get into employment that's where the book starts okay um i'm trying to see what to say without uh, spoiling for those who yeah, not you don't uh, want to give out re- too much right? read the book <laughs> yes uh, but the place where i'm going to read sophia has been called home to go and get married okay uh Uh, yeah so but this is not the first time she's going home yes this is like the towards the end so i want I, i would like to read an exempt where we see issues of um, education mm-hmm. women getting into employment mm-hmm. cultural heritage yes. or still having parents who believe in um, the traditional way of life that yeah. as an african girl yes you know to complete your life mm. maybe you need to get married okay but then for the girls who've gone to school do they really have that same thought okay so uh i'll read something we see how it goes okay okay so this is early in the morning the night before stella their mother Cause Sophia and Joy are visiting from the city Nairobi so they are in the village and when they were going to bed their mother told them to wake up early in the morning and come for breakfast because they have a meeting mm-hmm. so as they come in they are wondering why why mm-hmm. they've been called them okay. so early for this meeting so Sophia and Joy joined their parents for breakfast as instructed by Stella Stella is their mother They exchanged morning greetings with their parents as they sat down at the dining table. Mariko looked sternly at Joy. I called you here not because you have done anything wrong, but so you do not repeat the mistakes of your sister. So your sister is referring to Sophia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Joy looked at her father to hear more about the mistakes but Mariko did not expound on hearing the words referencing her Sophia's face became warm she was anxious feared what to expect next 
Her thoughts were interrupted when Stella spoke. What are your plans now that you have an excellent job? Do you have any other plans for your future, like getting married at the right age, settling down? Sophia and Joy turned at the same time and found themselves facing one another, then looked away just as fast. Sophia turned to Mariko and not Stella who asked the question. Papa, please, Papa, I have not stopped being your daughter. I cannot even imagine such a thought. I have not become a bad girl. Unless working hard at my job makes me a bad girl, what you call mistakes. Though it was a chilly early morning in July, a cold month when temperatures go as low as 18 degrees, Sophia felt droplets, warm droplets down her back. She squeezed her hands together to stop herself from trembling too much. She looked up and could tell that her parents were either digesting what she had said or waiting to hear her to hear her response to the question from her mother of settling down. To break the silence, she decided to continue. I love my job and I work with and for good people, people who recognize my efforts and have rewarded me accordingly. Now her hands were flat on the table to steady her trembling body. The frequent travels I go on with my boss are a blessing in disguise. Otherwise, I would not have managed to save money and provide the support I have given this far. In a shaky voice, she added, they give us money for food whenever we travel, and I put every cent into my savings account, she said, looking down at her untouched cup of tea on the table. Mariko cleared his throat, but did not talk. He appeared irritated and in deep thought. Sophia jerked on her seat when Mariko turned her direction and said, Aha! I see. How do you eat and sleep if you save all the money? Does the same boss pay for your expenses? Sophia looked at her father, eyes filled with tears. Papa, for once you are wrong. If you think I travel with my boss for things other than work, you are wrong. Putting heavy emphasis on the word wrong. Stella, Stella raised her hand, as students do at school. A sign that she wanted to say something, she lowered her hand when Sophia spoke. I got a promotion at work not too long ago in the form of a salary increase. The promotion also covers my transport to and from work. Joy, holding her cup of tea with both hands, turned to Sophia and smiled as Sophia continued. The driver who brought us here is one of the company drivers who picks me up from the house in the morning and drives me back home after work. Okay, I'll skip a few paragraphs. and Okay, um, okay so I'll continue. Now where Sophia is uh, addressing her mother, okay. she turned the direction of her mother. And Mama, you are still my loving mother. Always remember that when I do not answer your telephone calls, I am either busy at my computer completing an urgent task or away at meetings with my boss. If I miss your call during the working hours, I'll call you back between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. I hope that's okay with you. The room went quiet again. The tight expression on Mariko's face had loosened up into a smile. Sophia, Sophia stand 
Okay, Joy giggled, and Mariko turned and looked at her. She picked up her cup and sipped tea, placed the cup on the table, picked a mandazi from a nearby plate, and started to nibble, avoiding the annoyance look on Mariko's face. So I'll skip some pages and read um, something towards the end. Okay. Sophia, still toying with the ring on her finger, said, Papa, no offense meant, but I have already moved out of the village and out of our town into the city where I belong now. Mariko held up his open hand to the side of Sophia, a sign that she should not say more, but she spoke. That city has done us wonders, my job. Mariko cleared his throat and asked, So, when are you telling me about your city boyfriend? I think I'll stop there. Okay. <laughs>